In this video, you'll learn how to use Riverside to record high quality audio and video over the internet. The video goes through five steps. So let's get started on step one of how to record your podcast in Riverside. So if you're not already signed up, you'll need to visit the Riverside website and sign up for an account. We're on there now, we'll just click get started. There is a free plan, but it is quite limited. Your videos will be watermarked. And after the first two hours of recording, you'll have to record to one track. You won't be able to record to two separate tracks if you have two speakers. Uh, it also limits to 720p in video quality, but it does mean that you can use it for free and record unlimited audio and video calls before you decide to upgrade and at which point standard will be enough for most podcasters for a weekly podcast and then once signed up it's just a case of entering your email and password and logging in if you do sign up feel free to use the link in the description and use coupon code claricast to get 15 percent off your first purchase this is an affiliate link so we do get a small cut of course you can go directly to riverside.fm instead so once you're logged in you'll see your studios list on the side here. If you're using a free account, you'll only get access to one studio. If you have a paid account, you can create more studios. And the studios are sort of like digital recording studios that allow you to create different setups for different podcasts or for other uses. For most podcasters, just having the one studio will be fine. Now to get things set up to get the best results, click on the three dots next to your studio. And first you can rename it to whatever your podcast is called. I'm just going to give that the name of my podcast and then go into the settings. So click on the three dots again and go into settings. And these settings are going to depend on your situation, but I'm going to give you the most ideal settings to get the most out of your recordings. We've already named it. You can enable lobby waiting room. So it means if somebody joins your call, you have to manually let them in. So I leave that on um, just in case anything happens or I'm not ready yet, or I've joined the call early so that they don't also join the call when I'm not ready. There's a schedule studio option so that you can sort of enable the studio to only be accessible at certain times. But later on in the video, we're gonna talk about other solutions for scheduling your guests. If you keep scrolling down, you'll find the recording options. So recording mode, video and audio is selected, but obviously that's for recording video and audio. If you only have an audio podcast, you can select audio. Now for noise reduction, we're gonna turn that off because we're gonna do manual noise reduction in the mixing stage. Now, if you're not sure how to do noise reduction in the mixing stage, um, or you're not passing this off to a third party, you might wanna leave that on. It's gonna reduce background noise like air conditioners and laptop fans and things, but it doesn't sound as good as manual noise reduction does. So leave that off if you can. For your audio sample rate, leave it at the maximum available. So 44.1 will be the only one available if you have the free account. But if you're recording video and you have it available, then use 48. Again, same with your video resolution. If you're using a paid account and your camera can support it, then use 1080p. Your podcast episodes will look better on YouTube and everything. If you find that the video file size is too large or your internet can't handle the 1080p files because they are larger, you can switch it down to standard resolution. And then there are a few other settings here that are more sort of subjective if you want to count down time or after you hit record and things like that. But the ones that we've gone through are the most important ones in terms of getting you the best quality recording possible. When you're ready, click on go to studio to be taken to your studio to get set up. So now you're about to join the studio and you'll see a screen similar to this. So you'll see your video feed pop up and you'll see these drop down menus and your name. You can put your name in there if it doesn't pop up already. It asks you if you're using headphones or not. Now, when you're recording your podcast, both participants should be using headphones at all times. So put your headphones on and click I am using headphones. If you click I'm, I'm not using headphones, what it will do is apply echo cancellation, which is designed to prevent bleed. So the sound from your speakers going into your mic and creating an echo, but it, it affects the quality of the audio in a bad way. So if you can, it's best to wear headphones and ask your guests to do the same. And just make sure that your audio and video settings are correct here. Make sure that you've got in the drop down menu, your webcam selected or whatever camera you're using. And then in the second one, it's gonna be your microphone. So if you've got an audio interface or a USB microphone, it's gonna come up likely with the manufacturer or the name of the model, which had a microphone or interface you're using. And then the same for your speakers. So this will say Realtek Audio if you're just using Windows Audio. 
um, or have your audio interface or the equivalent for if you're using a Mac. And then once you're ready, you can click join studio. You can join as a producer, which is for those who aren't going to be participating in the conversation itself, but need access to the controls and settings during the conversation but we're joining as the host. So here we are in your studio. If you have a look to the right, you'll see this people tab here. If you can't see the people tab, just click on it down here, the two, the two heads at the bottom there. And this allows you to change the settings of the recording and the participants. So you'll see there that it's picking up my dialogue. If we get too close or if we turn it up too loud, it would start going into the yellow and then the red, and you don't want it to do that. If it's peaking, uh, i.e. hitting the top, it can cause nasty distortion. So just bring the volume down on your microphone or your audio interface until it's hovering around the middle there. And then again, you've got control over the echo cancellation. If you're both wearing headphones, you won't need this because it will affect the quality of the audio. Same with the remove background noise. If you're going to be editing and mixing the podcast afterwards, or you're going to be sending it off to a third party to do that, you don't need remove background noise on. It does help remove the background noise if there's sort of stuff going on in the background or your microphone has its own self noise that it creates. But you can get a much better quality and more accurate noise removal by doing this manually. So if you're going to be doing this manually after, then turn that off. Otherwise, you can turn it on if you're not sure how to do that. Once you've invited your guest, which we'll look at in just a moment, it will also come up with your guest just there and you can see uh, the settings for them as well. And then finally, you can add a name for your recording. So you can call it whatever your podcast is called and the episode number, or you can use a shorthand. If you want to add music and sound effects live during your recording, you don't want to be adding them on after for the edit. You can click on media down here at the bottom to open the media tab. It's got some default uh, little sound effects, clapping, drum roll, things like that. Um, if you want to add your own, you can click plus and then it's going to give you the option to search for sound effects or music to add. And then within the recording, while you're while you're having the conversation, you can click on these buttons to play that sound effect or intro and the guest and the host will be able to hear that as well. Now, the next step is to invite your guests. Obviously, if you're recording solo, then you can skip this step to step five. It would just be a case of recording yourself. But if you want to bring your guests in, this is how you do it. So you probably already noticed you've got this invite people option here. You can either double click this link, copy, or you can click copy link and then just send it via instant messenger, email, whatever to your guest. And when they click, they'll immediately join your studio. You can also use this link in calendar apps such as Calendly or Google Calendar. If you have a tool that you use to book calls with guests, you can paste this link into the invite and this link stays the same for this particular studio. So it doesn't matter what call it is, they're going to get this link. They'll know when to join and they'll be able to just click the link that they receive through your calendar app and join this studio when it's time. Or you can do invite by email. And then if you enter their email address in, make sure that they're set as a guest and then send invite. They'll get an email through, which looks a little bit like this. And again, they'll just click on the link and join in your studio. And once your guest clicks that link, they'll be transferred into your studio so that you can start recording. And we're going to look at that process now. And you can see that we've got wait in lobby turned on. Uh, my guest is now in the lobby. They've clicked on the link uh, and now they're waiting there so we can let them in. Uh, when we're ready to go. And then once you've let them in, they'll be transferred into the call and they'll show up on the people tab on the right. And then just make sure they've got the correct mic and camera and speaker selected and that you can see and hear each other. Make sure that your guest has headphones on as well and then you can keep the echo cancellation turned off. And we can also do a test recording. If we hover over the record button and click run test recording, it's going to give you five seconds to prepare when you're ready, say, I'm testing my mic. So then we can watch. And as you'll see, the actual video is quite high quality there, as opposed to the live footage. So and then we just click record and start recording when we're ready to start the episode. Hi, Georgia. Thank you for joining me on Podcasting Amplified. How are you doing today? During your recording, you do have the option to leave markers as well if you want to make notes or you know that there's a particularly good clip you can use, you can press the M key or you can click on the button at the bottom. And you can also take notes using the script option. And as we mentioned, if you click on media, 
and you click on the, the buttons, you can activate your music or sound effects live in the recording. And you'll notice at the top of the screen, it says uploading. This is because Riverside records locally on the speaker's computers to avoid the quality reduction that you get from recording over the internet. And you'll be able to see the quality of the video feed for my guest isn't that great in this recording. And that's because she doesn't have a great uh, network connection where she lives. So if I was recording this call on Zoom or Google Meet or Teams or anything like that where it records over the internet, this is the quality that I'd end up with for the video. Whereas because this is recording locally, even though the, the video quality looks poor now, once we download the full quality video at the end, it will look crystal clear as it would do on her side at the moment. And then we'll just click stop to make sure that that recording saved. Make sure you don't close the window or anything before you've stopped there. Um, and then you can hang up the call. Bye. And then you'll see that it's still uploading the tracks there. Like I said, it records them locally and then uploads it onto the Riverside system. And with Riverside, you get quite a few different download options. So once everything's ready, you can either download each participant separately. So next to myself, I can click high quality and I can download the raw audio. That's the audio you want. That's the WAV file that's uncompressed. So it's going to be the full quality. If you download the compressed audio, it's going to be a small file type, but it will be in poorer quality. And seeing as we're using Riverside for this, we want to get the most out of it possible. And then you can download the video as well separately in MP4 format. If a participant joined mid-call, then get the synced video. It will add some space before the call to make sure that everything's aligned. Otherwise, just download the raw video and then do the same for your other participant. Alternatively, just clicking export all. It's going to prepare download. There'll be a button there to download everything in a zip file to make things easier for you. There are other ways that you can export your files. You can go to the editor and chop things up. For this video, we're just going over how to record. And then most podcasters will be editing outside of Riverside anyway. But that functionality is there if you want to do editing inside of Riverside. As well as other functions, such as we've got a transcript ready there. Um, so you can download a transcript. It's an AI generated transcript, so it's not going to be 100% accurate. You'll have to go through it and edit it yourself but it's good to have uh, just another little bonus that you get with Riverside. And then also you can generate clips as well. So you can use those for shorts. Again, this is this video, we're only going into the recording part of it. So we're not looking at that in this particular video, but those options are there if you want to use them to save time. And as you can see, it's downloading now. It's quite a large file, 1.2 gig. That's because we're downloading that full quality WAV file in the high definition video. And then once you've downloaded, you can just unzip your folder and in there you'll find the host, audio and video. Um, we, because we clicked on export all, it's given us both versions, but to save time and just not clutter things up, you can download just the wave and just the, the standard video. And then we've got the same there and it's downloaded our transcription as well. And that's it. You've recorded high quality audio and video for your podcast. Bear in mind that Riverside isn't going to magically make a rubbish mic or rubbish camera sound and look good. You will still need to buy the right mic and, and camera. So it's pretty simple to use. The interface is nice and clean and it's got just about everything that you need. Um, it is a little bit trickier to set up, especially for less tech savvy people than something like Zoom that your guests might be more familiar with. Riverside only works at time of recording on Microsoft Edge on their app and also on Google Chrome, which I'm using at the moment. So if your guest isn't using one of those or they're not familiar with, you know, the difference between web browsers, then you might find it a little bit trickier to get them on a call with you. But if you don't have the option to record locally and you want to get the best recording possible, then it is still a great option as long as you're willing to sort of maybe guide some of your guests through the process a little bit. Let me know in the comments section below, what are you using Riverside to record? Are you Have you got an interview podcast? Are you recording solo? It'd be great to know what you're using it for. And for more podcast recording tips and tutorials, hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.